square roots. Square roots are like the opposite of applying exponents. So we know exponents um, are used when you have these powers here. So we have like 2 squared is an example of exponents. That equals 4. Well, the opposite of applying that would be the square root of 4, and that gives us 2 back. So you can see how there's kind of an opposite relationship here. Likewise, if we look at like 3 cubed, we know that equals 27 if we do 3 times 3 times 3. Well, if we were to do the cube root of 27, we know that equals 3 then. So, essentially square roots are just asking what two numbers can be multiplied to get the number on the inside. Cube roots ask what three of the same number, or what number times itself three times, can be multiplied to get the number on the inside. So, to simplify square roots, we're going to take out perfect squares. So, if we have the square root of 4, we could also write that as a square root of 2 squared. And 2 squared is our perfect, we have a square there, so that's just going to equal 2. Because the squared and the square root cancel. And just as a side note, um, there's many different types of roots, and the one that doesn't have any number in this area over here is called a square root. If you have like a little 3 here, that's going to be your cube root, and so on. You can go have any number there. So. Um, also, an example of simplifying the square roots is if you had, like, the square root of 12. Well, 12 is not a perfect square itself, but we can break that down into a perfect square. Because the square root of 12 is equal to, like, the square root of 4 times 3. Which we know 4 is a perfect square, so that's 2 squared times 3. So that would overall simplify out to be... 2 squared of 3. So let's do a little bit more complex example and try to simplify the square root of 20 x to the 5th y to the 7th z squared. So our first step is we're going to rewrite and we're going to group our perfect squares. So, the 20, although it's not a perfect square itself, can be broken down into 5 and 4. So that has our perfect square, so like 2 squared times 5. x to the 5th, we have two, two x, we have two x squared groups, and then we have the x left over. The y to the 7th, we have three y squared groups and an extra y. And we have a z squared. So now we go ahead and we pull out our perfect squares. So when we do that, we're going to have our 2 come out, and we'll have two x's come out, so x squared is going to come out. We have three y's coming out, and we have a z coming out. And what we have left over on the inside is our 5xy. So that's how you can simplify that square root. Now let's do something a little different and simplify cube roots, and we're going to pull out perfect cubes. So we're going to follow the same kind of steps. So we want to rewrite it, and we're going to rewrite it showing our perfect cubes. So 27 we know is just 3 cubed. We have x to the third, and another x there. And we have y to the third, and y to the third, because we can break that y to the sixth down of that. And we still just have a z squared there. Now if we pull out our perfect cubes, our 3 is going to come out. 1x will come out. 
two Ys will come out, and that's all. And what we have left over then on the inside is our X, Z squared. So that's a kind of a different example about using cube roots instead of our square roots we're used to. Now let's think of a more practical example of how to use square roots, and we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So a triangle has legs of 5 and 12, and we want to know what is the length of the hypotenuse. So first let's kind of write out our Pythagorean theorem, and we remember that that says with the right triangle, we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And that a, b, and c is going to refer to our sides of our triangle. Where c is our hypotenuse, a is one leg, and b is our other leg. So we can say a equals 5 and b equals 12 here. So if we do that, let's go ahead and substitute into our equation. So we have 5 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. So just simplifying this, we can go ahead and carry out the squares on the numbers. So we'll get 169 equals c squared. But we have to get just c, so we essentially need to remove the exponent. Well, as we said above, to do that, we're going to apply the square root, because that's like the opposite of applying exponents. So we will take the square root. to undo our exponent. And remember, if we do something to one side of our equation, we have to do it to the other. So we're going to take our square root of 169 as well. And when we carry that out, our square root of 169 is 13, and then we just get C on our other side. So our other side length, our hypotenuse, is 13. So that is one way to use square roots in real life.